Hey guys, it's like a sauna in there. You excited, Dwayne? Is this exciting? <laughs> Actually, um, I'm intrigued. <laughs> Everything we do with you is exciting. We're here at Armtech, which is the guys that make the giant culverts, and they're letting me pick one. They said, you know what, Kevin? Have a look and pick whatever one you want. And I'm like, wow, these are these are crazy big. Look at the size of these things. We've got some load restrictions, basically on how big we can carry. So we're gonna try to get one that, uh, that fits on our trailer in order to get it home today. But look at these things, raised bed gardens. Like there's all sorts of ideas for these things. North American wide, you can look these guys up, Armtech. We're gonna put a link down in the description for, uh, for all your pipe culvert needs. We're gonna load up our trailer and uh, off we go. First step of our sauna. We're gonna build a sauna. This stuff is cool. I'm in a big pipe. I'm in a big pipe. Big pipe, big pipe. <laughs> I think it's a little bit bigger than I anticipated. A little bit bigger? It's big, big pipe. <laughs> Definitely an adventure this morning. <laughs> That's insane. That thing is huge. Here, can we see it? I don't know if we can see it. it might be too bright. We got, uh, <laughs> we got, we got a huge pipe. We don't know how to unload it. We can't lift it. We have no machinery that lifts it. So what we're gonna do? What are we gonna do, Dwayne? Well, we're gonna use gravity, I think. We're just gonna tip it up, dump it, and really hope for the best. There's nothing we could do anyway, so there's nothing we can't stop it, we can't lift it, and probably roll it once it's on the ground. There's nothing we could do but watch. Let's watch this and see what happens. It'll be fun. Well, it's gonna fall. Well, that sounds scary. You know what we need? We need to strap our top. And, and give it a little bit of a tug. A little bit of tug. We gotta get the old uh, tractor out. I think so. You wanna just give her a push? That'll probably cut you in half. I'm thinking it would. Oh, it's going, it's going. You know what, we need that, use that, uh, yeah. No, you're bored. Well, it's, we're ready, we're ready to do this. What are you doing? We're prying it, prying it. Big old tin can, nope. Ready? Yeah. Oh, she's gonna go. <laughs> that worked better than we thought. Another fine day at the off-grid cabin in the woods. Dwayne's here. And whenever Dwayne's here, we're gonna do something a little crazy. <laughs> yeah. All right, the plan today is to move a giant pipe. And you're like, why are you moving a giant pipe, Kevin? And, and the reason we're moving a giant pipe today is because winter is kind of settled in. You can see our snows on the ground and we're starting to think warm thoughts. The warmest thought I can think of is let's, let's make a sauna. We've got this culvert. It's nine foot in diameter, nine feet long, and it weighs a lot. <laughs> yeah. So that's why Dwayne's here. So Dwayne and I are going to, we're gonna try to manage this culvert down the trail to its final location right next to the pond, right over there. Well, you know, if you're gonna fail, fail quickly, right? <laughs> or big. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's uh, let's see if we yeah. can get this thing rolling. Yeah. Well, I think we can get it rolling. It's <laughs> getting it stopped. Getting it stopped. Roll in, roll in, roll in. What do you think of that tree doing? I think it's a big tree. So we're just surveying site conditions and we've uh, discovered there is a giant ash tree. And the ash tree is a little dead and it's standing kind of where we want to put our culvert. Ah, we can knock that down later. They love it when I do that. Culvert in place and that should, uh, everything will work out. Okay, we got it 25 feet. No, we got a little bit further than that, but we've got it in the bush. And uh, it's rolling down the hill. Well, we don't want it to roll down the hill. So we're gonna reposition our chain. Probably tuck it from the other way. It's hard to illustrate slope, anything to do with cameras. So we're trying to show where there's a big incline on this the trail and because of the snow, we're worried about it actually just kind of bowling down there. Maybe you should get in there and roll down it. 
No. <laughs> Come on. We're gonna send it. We're gonna send it down the hill and see what happens. Is it going now? It's going now. How about now? How about now? You're just gonna send it. I'm gonna send it. It's not actually gonna go that far. Ooh. Oh yeah, I was gonna go down the hill, was it? So close. But about three inches of hard maple. What do I want you to say? What are we doing here, Joe? Well, we're taking this dead ash down because there's this, it just happened to grow right beside this culvert. <laughs> this steel culvert, it just grew there and Kev wants to build something out of this, so it, it, it's under it. I always so call Joe when there's a tree that's quite a little bit too big. I don't have the saw. If I had the saw, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'd go for it. So we- 500 will help. The, the, ooh, MS yes. 500. Ooh, that's a, that's a big one. We've got a couple cedars notch in preparation for it to go into them and they'll go at the same time. So we're gonna domino these these other trees that are in the way. Ready? Yeah. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> How about nice? That's perfect. Okay, <laughs> hold on. You gonna give her a little tickle? Look at it. Yeah, she wants to go. She's like caught on like a friggin' well, one inch branch. It's probably this cedar a bit too. Oh yeah, I think it's holding. Yeah, maybe that. You ready? Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Nice. And so we've got those monkeys off our back above our sauna because we didn't want to get crushed. Joe from JL's Tree Service is a good friend of mine, so he came out and, and fixed that up for me. So we don't have we don't have crazy tree gonna squish us. Monkeys Thanks. on our back. That's right. Have a look at your ash. Make sure your ash are healthy. Smash your ash. Smash your ash whenever <laughs> they're dead. Hey boys, you guys excited? I'm excited. We got uh, another day. Another day and it's, uh, I think winter, winter has finally settled in. I don't know, maybe it'll rain tomorrow. Who knows? Dawn's back. How many layer day today? Uh, it's another four layer day. It's a four layer day today. The blood's gotta get thicker soon. Whew, it's cold. We knocked down our, uh, the ash trees that were threatening our, uh, our sauna build. And now we're gonna cut these guys up. We're going to uh, use them in the build. The plan is to grab this, this big guy right here and uh, cut it into uh, 12 or 13 inch, or 13 inch, 13 foot long, log and then uh, yank it out of here with the old Kubota. We don't know if the uh, this little girl's got enough got enough power to pull her so we're gonna give it a whirl. You know what the byproduct of all this uh, removing of the dead trees is firewood so that's always good when you can harvest firewood in the process of grabbing wood. So it's using what we have to make what we want. Let's get going it's getting cold. I'm gonna put you guys up here you can watch. Whenever I'm coming up with an idea or a plan I like to look at what I'm working with in order to determine what I need. In this case, this guy is nine foot six in diameter. Now, when I'm cutting up my log, I gotta anticipate the fact that I need to have an overhang, kind of like a sitting area in front of this guy. I'm going to cut my log appropriate length, but then I gotta look at the, the diameter, the circumference of this, of, this, of this thing. If I go over a board much wider than, let's say, stick to the relatively narrow, not so wide board in order to make my circumference to maintain the circle. Culvert, again, it's cold. Let's get, uh, Let's get cutting. You know what, if we get that thing actually to the mill, we can't actually lift it on the mill. I think we're just gonna use the log that's already up there for this particular one, and this one will be a, a fight for another day, because 
as you can see, it's uh, it's heavy, it's big. This is because I'm more stubborn than the log. This I've been working on for a little while. It's a uh, it's log lift out of a decommissioned tombstone cart. You may notice if you guys watched the original cabin build, my brother and I were using this these sets of the sets of wheels here. The sets of wheels. These sets of wheels. That's not even the right word either. This axle here for uh, basically carrying logs or putting on top of it. But I then designed a system where I'm going to use this as a log arch. That log lift, uh, log arch would work pretty good. It's a little bent. So I think we're going to go a little bit. We're going to go back to the drawing board on this guy. Maybe get some heavier gauge steel. I'm going to talk to my welder, see what he thinks. Because it, it probably should, it, it probably deserves some square tubing. Some really thick wall square tubing. In order to get this thing so it doesn't bend when we... That and we we're kind of pushing and pulling and twisting and stuff. So probably better is if you just pulled it straight. This is heavier than the log. Let's just turn it. Track is left and at me. After our unsuccessful attempt yesterday at loading that giant log, I've kind of retooled my idea of what we're going to clad the outside of this culvert with. My current plan is to harvest these dead standing cedar trees. These are all just kind of poles that are standing everywhere. They're just forest fire firewood. So the plan is to harvest those guys and I'm going to tick, 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 all the way around the uh, culvert that way. I kind of like two birds, one stone sort of technique. It's going to uh, A, clean up the forest of all the dead standing and it's going to allow me to actually clad the outside of this thing so it doesn't look like a, like a culvert as much as I like looking at culverts. Culverts are awesome. But again, I want to have it aesthetically pleasing as well as um, functional. Yeah, we're going to harvest a lot of these four inch diameter standing sticks cut them up 12 feet long and that allows us to give us our overhang a lot of structural support that way and uh great success only solutions to our problems not necessarily just problems just solutions shouldn't take that many it's only 28 feet in diameter how many sticks is that make your guess down below <laughs> how many sticks So this looks like a rock, but it isn't. It's frozen ground. We're gonna let the barrel do its job for a little while and uh, thaw out the ground so we gotta have sand or dirt to work with So because we have to level it with level the, the cylinder. The culvert. She no bueno, we, we slide right into the pond. So we'll let that thaw out a little bit and then we'll be able to rake it out. Working in the winter is especially difficult. The tool that has saved my my uh, my tail on this guy is the, uh, the old hookaroon for the human. Ugh. Anyways, we chipped out, we ended up chipping out uh, about three inches of uh, the frozen stuff on top in order to level our culvert. So now we've got it uh, pretty much level. We can start putting the exterior cladding on and actually make it look like we've got some progress. We've got like two days into this thing. Half the battle is getting all the material you need on site in order to actually get progress made. We've got the culvert more or less level. Now we can start stacking them on. This is the, this is the fun part. It's interesting. See, look at the pond. See the pond there? Look, it's got a, it's got a weird melting area there. I wonder if, uh, I wonder if that's where the spring is. It's going to be like the surprise when you're skating. We're making some pretty good progress putting these posts on. What we're finding is that we, uh, when we put the log on to the building, we actually can rotate it slightly in order to maintain, I guess, flat and true. So there's not big old gaps between the boards. Not like you're gonna see much of it anyways, because over time there'll be, you know, crud and whatnot collecting inside there. And it'll darken the, uh, the bright. Your eyes kind of drawn to the light. Like even if you took the little bark and stuffed it in there, you would probably 
it'll probably disappear. So that's the idea is to try to give it that cladding look. I, I really like the look of it so far. Like a big barrel or a beaver dam or something. What does it look like, Don? A long house? Could be a long house. It's a log house. It's a long log house. You know, it's, it's really cool is over here. This little area here, you kind of have the natural, the natural kind of like lounging area. You can kind of, oh, it's so relaxing. Well, there was a chair here. Maybe it's not going to be a ice rink after all. Maybe it'll be like a putting, a putting rink where you kind of put your golf ball into the hole in the, in the water. Or that's just like the hazard. Don't, don't fall in the water. Don't fall in the hole. It's cold. Well, another thing that actually keeps us pretty warm is this our barrel fire that if you if you can make a fire don will come and he'll help because he likes to burn things the favorite the favorite thing of don some people like to drink don likes to burn things we should drink while burning things yeah <laughs> yeah our supply our supply of poles is dwindling but don's convinced don's convinced well he's he's kind of half hoping that we got enough logs in order to do it we should have a trivia or a guess you guys should guess how many logs are on this thing we haven't counted them yet, so we don't exactly know, but we're gonna count them at the end to make sure we, we'll figure it out. I think I'm behind you, eh? As you guys know, the price of lumber these days is astronomical. So whenever you find two by fours on the side of the road, like I did with these guys, pick them up. They were at a, uh, a roofing company and they were sitting out front, free to get home. So these are uh, the two by fours, about nine feet long, and they're uh, they're still in skid form. So they got cross members, they got nails, they're not quite straight. So I'm gonna reuse them, but the uh, best way to reuse them is to take them apart, obviously. Well, I figured I'd bring you guys up to speed a little bit on this. Uh, I've been working on this for a couple of hours already this morning and the uh, rain and snow has decided to come back. My arch nemesis, the rain in the winter. I don't like rain in the winter. I don't like rain in the summer either. But anyway, so what we're doing is uh, we're closing in the end walls. As much fun as it is to close in end walls on a round building, you got to think outside the box because it's not a box. It's a cylinder. What I've got is these things. I'm not sure what they are. They're brackets for garage doors and the garage door guy happens to have a lot of them. I don't know if they come with spare parts, but uh, needless to say, they come to me because they're extra. So I've, uh, what I've ended up doing is actually tacking them up all the way around. This gives me something to attach a two by four to, which is gonna be my structure for my wall. And I've lagged those in with self-tapping screws and then I'm gonna stick frame the wall. As easy as that sounds on a round round building much like the uh the hobbit house just a little bit bigger because we're we're nine feet tall i don't know if you guys can see that can you see the laser so that allows me to measure from this point down at the bottom to this point up at the top this is a laser it allows it to shoot a plumb line up and down it also shoots a, a horizontal laser level a level line so this is what i'm going to use to actually measure and cut the studs that are going to frame up the back wall now that we've got our wall framed up, I'm going to sheet the outside of it with uh, RX board, which is in my neck of the woods called code board. It's a one inch piece of foil backed foam insulation. Gives you an R value of about six. So I picked this up at a steel at uh, on my local store, hardware store. And then they, uh, it actually was, was storm damage. I guess it was blowing around in the wind or a tornado, I don't know. It's, it's like, it's it's beat up. But in this application, as long as you're, you're careful when you install it and you fill all your gaps with spray foam afterwards and you tape all your joints, it pretty pretty much gives you an airtight seal. When putting any of your sheeting material on, it's a good idea to plumb up your first sheet or level it. And that allows you to give you a straight, straight edge for the next piece.
Well, I'm pretty excited. I found a log I can pick up with my little tractor, my, my Kubota BX23. I found one. I think it's the maximum capacity. I ended up using a little piece of wood on the edge of the mill in order to, uh, in order to kind of pry it up there. It just kind of canted it up a little bit and uh, hey, we got ourselves a nine foot log. A nine foot log by about 12 inches in diameter. Uh, it's it's heavy. It's it's an ash log and what I what I'm planning to do with this log is to mill it up into a half inch thick lap siding and that's going to go on the front and back of the sauna kind of to match everything else. And and the thing with the ash is it turns nice and gray when it's uh, when it's weathered. So does cedar. So it's it is a hardwood. I do have it on a couple other a couple other pieces the uh, on the front of the cabin I have the uh, the shake siding and that's uh, that's weathered really well. You know, if you got you got to use what you have to make what you want to what you want to do and, and and in this case I have a lot of ash logs. There's going to be ash logs 10 years into the future because that emerald ash borer is is killing all the trees. So there is a lot of ash right now that you can use. We're gonna mill this guy up. It's gonna give us a lot of material out of, out of that one log. All right, here comes the fun part. This is the installation of the flooring. Does it look like we're installing the floor yet? We're making a level area for the floor and anytime you're dealing with an odd shape, it always helps to use as much technology as you possibly can. And in this case, I'm using a laser level. Um, I've, so I've got my laser level set up here and it's uh, shooting a line here and I want my floor to be about six inches or six inches six feet across finished So what I've done is I've actually measured it out the tape measure eh, Doesn't matter. I've measured it out. It's about six feet to the edge of the the actual culvert Actually six foot one inches because I'm gonna line this with uh, one inch foam on both sides in order to give me thermal break. So this guy, if you can see, so I line that guy up, touching the laser on both sides, and I've actually drawn, drawn a line. So line there, line here, and then I cut it, and I can sit it on top of my plate, and that gives me a, a level space. I want it to be six feet across because I want to use the curve of the building itself for a backrest. Because if it's six feet of floor space, I'll have a be able to put a chair around this height, so about 16 inches off the floor, and then I'll still have a nice backrest on the back wall, and it'll give me ample space in the middle to either put like a table or a sitting area, because this is gonna be a multi-use space. It's going to work as a sauna if you really want it hot, and if you want just a place to relax because you're you know done skating on the pond or something like that, and you wanna come in and warm up, you can do that as well. And uh, you could double up as a, you know, if you, have your, if you have your bench or your table up top, you could actually sleep on both sides, in theory. Or you could have lunch. You guys may have noticed that there is a uh, there's lacking of a bottom plate underneath the doors at the very bottom of the culvert, and I did that for a reason. And my reason is is if there's any condensation that forms on the outside of the culvert or the inside of the culvert, but behind my installation, it's going to run down and it's going to find the lowest point, and then it's going to run out. That's my theory, anyways. You know what? I could actually I could cut a vent hole on both sides, and then it could uh, it could just like blow like a wind tunnel place for mice to hide. We're finally starting to look like something, guys. We got uh, we got our windows in. That's exciting. You're like, why did you get your windows in? You don't have your wall in. You know what? It's easier to just kind of what you got because you don't, everything's kind of a little bit off and you got to work with it. So it's easier to throw the window in place and then frame around it. I happen to have these windows left over and that's getting like, a, that's like, it sounds like a broken record. I got all these things. It's true. I do like these, we're, these are laying in the bush. You can see the dirt is on them. It's, uh, you know, it's good. It's good that they have a home now. My high school teacher reached out to me. My com communication technology teacher reached out to me and she says, I have a curved shower door and if anybody can use it, it's you because you're a creative guy. And I went, I will, I will take it. So we got it down here and it turns out it's, uh, it wasn't a door, it was a panel. Thanks, Cheryl. So that was the plan originally was, was to do a curved glass shower door on the front of it and um, it doesn't work because it's just a panel, it's not a door. The idea is to have the benches on the side here and uh, you'll be able to look out the, the window. And, and what's interesting, what's actually cool is I've got, I've got a window that actually opens. So if it gets a little too hot in here, you can crank the window. I can open the door, jump in the pond. Yeah, it's starting to get somewhere. 
I like it. I like it. Progress. The good thing about kind of building yourself and having complete control of the entire build is the ability to take the windows out in order to scribe your wood. So the wood was, was installed loosely and then what I did was I actually popped the windows out uh, and then scribed a line and then used my chainsaw and I, I was able to cut exactly the opening of the window. And then I was able to reinstall the windows and actually push them out flush where the lap siding is. And, and what I mean by where it's flush the lap siding is that I can basically put my trim on on the outside and have it flush on the lap siding. Because as you know, it's got the proud and then the not so proud but it's really hard to kind of guess where your window is supposed to be before your uh, insulation's on and your lap siding's on. So it's, it's, it's good to have the ability to be able to move it and, uh, and install it afterwards. Another, another good reason why you should adjust the window once you've got the, your, your lap siding is you only have to do jam build outs on one side. And what I mean about a jam build out is if, if this wasn't flush with the siding, I'd have to actually build the material out. You can see I have a little bit of a lip, but then I have to put, I have to put my interior cladding on uh, and then you get your jam build out that'll extend it to the wall flush so you can actually put your trim on. And again, it's easier if you only have to do one side of that. It basically cuts your, cuts your workload in half. 50% of the work. Build on our successes, right? All right, so trim. So what I'm using for trim is the same stuff as the siding, which is the ash pieces. I ripped them down to two and a half inches uh, square stock, basically, which means there's no profile. So I can cut my 45 or my miter on both sides. Keep flipping. And to the people at the back of the class, calling this a skill saw is kind of like calling a, a tissue a Kleenex. It's just a brand. So this is a circular saw. I know it's not a skill saw. It's a Makita circular saw because it's got a round saw blade. I got some flack from that. It's not a skill saw. It's a circular saw. It's true. But again, a Kleenex isn't a, a Kleenex. It's a tissue. Again, we're talking brand names. It's, it's local, local colloquialism. Is that how you say that word? The local, the local term. If you ask somebody for a skill saw around here, they're going to hand you this thing, whether it's a circular saw or a skill saw. Anyways, that's my skill saw rant. Let's make some trim with my circular saw. This is what we got so far. We've got our outdoor, we got our outdoor cladding done. We've got our windows in, we've got our doors in. I'm dizzy. You can't do this when you're older to spin around. I'm still spinning. We're working on our sauna because we like a nice place to, you know, relax. You can relax in the sauna after you play some hockey. That's right. We're building a village. We got a cabin. We got the off-grid cabin up there. We've got our root cellar over there. We've got our outhouse in case, well, nature calls. We've got the cube. Now we've got the sauna. You can see the pond has frozen over. We've shoveled it off. We've, uh, we're just waiting for some really cold weather because we're going to end up... Uh, we're gonna end up flooding it. We're gonna build a maybe a zamboni. We gotta make sure that snow stays off of it in order to uh, in order to make sure it it freezes properly. So while we're watching we're watching ice freeze, we've got our back wall. We've got to do. Uh, we've got our material. We've got it all milled up, which is uh, which is great news because that's that's half the battle. Don's milling about. See, there's Don. Hey, Don. Nature's calling. Nature's calling. Yeah, it's kind of easier to go into the bush than into the into the outhouse. We got our front on, we don't got a doorknob yet, we got our windows in. So this is what we're working with on the inside. So we've got basically a culvert, but it's it's a nice culvert. We gotta put a floor in here, we're gonna get a heat source, we've got to put our cladding on in the inside, some lighting, some decorative stuff, some benches, some insulation. We got our work cut out for us. We're just uh we're gonna get started. We're gonna sit on the back wall. So we're doing this siding and it's kind of a it's kind of a pickle because there's no real easy way to get a formula for what angle it is. So what we end up doing is actually taking our board, cutting it roughly to length from side to side, and then kind of, if you put it in place, if you put it in place and then actually draw what you think is the circumference of the circle, and then we cut it out from there, that seems to work the best. And, and actually it'll be a little easier on the back side because we don't have to, we don't got a rock on a rock, it's a hard place on a hard place. We can actually sit it out front of the logs themselves and then kind of draw a line 
and then tack it in that way. That seems to be the easiest way. Maybe there's a better way. There is no formula. Well, there's probably a formula, but that's too much math. You guys know how much I like math. Now that we have the outside all finished, it, uh, does it look like a little black Jupiter? I think it looks like Jupiter. Don doesn't, uh, Don doesn't agree. He doesn't agree with me. He doesn't think it looks like Jupiter, but I think it looks. I think it looks like Jupiter. It's hard, it's hard to stare at the, the pond all day and, and not want to go skating. Yeah, at some point. <laughs> Maybe bring your skates tomorrow. We'll go for a rip. Play a little uh, afternoon shinny. Although that is pretty comfortable. Maybe I'll just have a nap. Okay, so this is a chunk of our floor. As you can see, it's about two inches of thick styrofoam and it's got the metal on both sides. So that's going to give us a, a well insulated floor. That's not going to be the structure. The structure is actually going to be two by six. So when I didn't have any walls up, I actually, uh, when I did the first front wall to make the door entrance level, I shot a laser over to the edge and I actually marked it on, on the studs because I'm looking past my nose when I build. So this one here, we just go down two and five eighths from our original line and that should give us our floor, our level floor. It went actually in surprisingly well. I did not anticipate it being that easy. Uh, we ended up using two by eight down the middle and then two by six on each side and then to fill in the gap next to where the uh, round part of the culvert is, is we put a, uh, a two by four flat on end and that allows us to get our six, exactly six feet across from one side to the other. And now we can put our insulated uh, garage door panels on top and that'll give us a nice thermal break from the bottom and uh, it'll allow us to continue our thermal break all the way up around. Does it feel like a sauna in here yet? Look at that. Perfect. We're ready to jam and everything. So what we got left from the, the workshop build is a couple of pieces about this wide. And as you can see, it's uh, not quite wide enough. We're a little short. Why are we trying to bite this thing? Let's just uh, let's go play some hockey and pick up some how to speak more. <laughs> I got the wrong skate on. <laughs> hey, figure skate. And I'm dizzy. You can't do this when you're older to spin around. I'm still spinning. <laughs> oh no. Oh, missed the net. I got the goalie stick. All right, that was too much fun. We <laughs> let's do that. I'm going to do that again. Here, let's. I'm going for the new, the new cabin record. Sliding was easier when I was a kid. Yeah. I don't know if you guys are like me and you guys keep track of the price of things and as they go up in price. Maybe it's the older I get. Five eighths of an inch OSB. And it used to be about $12. I bought a piece today, it was $42. That's crazy talk. I, I can't even imagine what plywood. Plywood's probably like uh, double that, like 80 bucks a sheet. I don't see a shortage of wood anyway. Commodities, I guess. Uh, there's gotta be a, I wonder if there's a breaking point. The prices of stuff just keeps going up. It all makes more sense to just use what you have figure out a different way to do it as opposed to going out and, and spending $42. Imagine you have to build a house. I don't know what the cost of it to do a house would be. I got my sheet. I got my one sheet of OSB that I needed to finish. Par for the course, right? The uh, panel installation that we have down below, which is the garage door panels, is uh, just basically free floating down there. It is uh, lapped and joined together, but it's got a little rubber gasket down there. So that's providing some sort of sealing. And then we're gonna use these guys, a four inch screw. We're gonna go right down through the OSB, through the panel into the studs below. And that should give us a nice solid floor for our tile. Cause we're tiling this bad boy. As much as I like doing tile. Gotta have some style, some tile style. Now that we've got our floor in, we're, we're basically closing in the envelope. And what I mean by envelope is I want a heated space. So 
Any of the below the floor is out of my heated space area, so I'm not going to worry about it. But the thing is, is my wall goes all the way down to my unheated area. So to prevent moisture and humidity and whatnot to get up inside my wall, I'm gonna put chunks of the same RX board, which is the one inch foil back foam insulation. I'm gonna tuck it in my joist my stud space is here, basically at the floor level. And that gives me a continuous thermal break in the entire sauna. On the other side, I don't have to worry because my bottom plate is there, so it doesn't go down there. But on this back wall, because my studs go all the way down, I'm gonna fill those guys. So, like I said, I'm using my foam. It's important to always wear a mask when you're using insulation. That way it doesn't suck as much. Look, I am your father. <laughs> Brockwell is my insulation of choice, and the reason being is because it can get wet and then dry out, and it's still good as insulation. It's easy to work with once you you know get the knack. Like I use a use a steak knife to cut it, and uh, I find it not as itchy as regular fiberglass insulation. Most fiberglass insulation, if it gets wet, it becomes useless, especially if you're using it in a sauna where there is a potential for moisture. This can dry out eventually and become just as good as it was before. And that's why I choose rock wool insulation. I figured give you guys a little bit of an update on the uh, the ducks. The uh, they seem to be thriving. Hello, ducks. Can you hear them? He or she's got a hat on. He's got the definitive gray head. Looks like a, like a hat or a whole hood. Their little house seems to be very, very accommodating. It seems to be very warm. The only, again, the only problem I'm currently having is the uh, the water situation. So, uh, so yeah, I just bring out some warm water every day and, and, and add. Can you guys keep it down over there? We've got our ceiling supports on now. This gives us something to nail our, our ceiling to once we get uh, once we get to that point. So now what we're going to do is we're going to infill the spaces in between these with our RX board, which is our foil backed foam insulation. And then we're going to put a layer over the entire thing. And then when we put our ceiling on, we nail through the insulation into our furring strips. But as you can see, we've got them all the way around and they're about 32 inches apart. I think that's adequate in order to uh, in order to secure our ceiling. Can you feel the warmth yet? We've got our second layer of RX board on. So we put the base layer in between our, our furring channels and then we put our second layer on, which is our, so we got about two inches of styrofoam and we've sealed up all our joints. We spray foamed in the crack and then we're going to tape up the cracks to give us even more ceiling. And then maybe we just, we don't even need a fire in here. You can more just, you know, get a bunch of people in here and just body warmth. A body warmth sauna. sauna. It's probably a small fire, reasonably sized fire in here because you won't need much. It's nice and soft, eh? Oh yeah, you don't have to worry about the bumps. Yeah. We were down at uh, minus nine last night or something like that, and this water's sitting in, the, sitting in the sauna, and it's not frozen until you bang it. Look at, as soon as you bang it, it freezes. We're just uh, trimming off the chunks of foam that are a little bit proud on the, uh, on the RX board. And then we're gonna put vapor barrier on the back wall. Vapor barrier is pretty much regionally specific. Some, sometimes in warmer climates, you put the vapor barrier on the outside. I think it's always, you always put the vapor barrier on the warm side of the wall. And in this case, in the sauna, inside, in theory, should be the warmest. So we're gonna put it on the inside here. But if you're in Florida, I think the vapor barrier goes on the outside. 
Again, regionally specific. We probably want to keep our moist, warm, moist air inside our building as opposed to inside our wall cavity. Okay, we're finally at the stage where we start putting our wall cladding on. So we've got uh, this is a half inch by seven and a, and a bit. That gives us our radius around our, our cylinder. So Don's just cutting them to length. They're about 101. 101 and a half inch long. And the idea is to, we're gonna brad nail those guys in place. And then once we've got our end walls up, we are going to uh, put some battens on them covering that little gap and it gives us a little it got, allows us to have a little bit of expansion and contraction when we heat up and cool down Don the million dollar question we never counted how many uh, pulls we used uh, what was your guess? What was your guess? The original, the original guess. I believe the original guess was 72 or something. Oh, it wasn't 69, was it? Mm, may have been. Might have been. Was it close to 70 or 68? Or no. Anyway, so we counted them. There is officially, the official count is 76 dead standing cedar poles. Again, there was nothing alive that we cut down to put around the thing. These are all dead standing forest fire material and we repurposed them to give the exterior cladding of the sauna. So there, there you go. 76, 76 poles. That's a lot of poles. Every once in a while I find something that I think, geez, could I take this and make it into something useful? And, and I think, yeah, I probably can. So then I grab it and I, and I, I hang on to it. So the other day I was driving along and I found uh, what looks like to be an old boiler. So there it is there. So there's your there's your firebox. You just need to put a door. And so my thought is if I cut if I cut it down the center and actually fold it up and kind of weld along the side here, I'll be able to uh, have an area for rocks. All right, so we've gone through the process of getting everything set up. Uh, as you can see, the back wall is not done, and that actually works to our advantage because we can uh, tile a little looser. We don't have to get our tile right up against the wall. We can kind of, you know, because the wall is going to go over top of the tile. The plan is to now heat up the space, heat up the floor, heat up basically everything we can in order to keep it nice and warm, can give it a little bit of thermal mass. Uh, we're starting off at uh, with 33.8 Fahrenheit. Ideally, it's 10 degrees. Again, we're not in an ideal situation because we are in the forest. We're tiling a floor in the forest, which is, is the first for me. Like it's the first for Dawn. We're gonna see how it works. We've got uh, some special product we're gonna use. We're, we're, dry, we're drying out some wood. All right, so we're, uh, we've got some uh, interesting stuff that we're going to be putting on the floor, which is the, uh, the Schluter company makes this. It's a detro membrane. It's a decoupling membrane. It's also a waterproofing membrane. As you know, saunas get a little bit wet and we want to protect our subfloor underneath our tile because as you guys may or may not know, that tile and grout is not necessarily waterproof. The tile itself is waterproof, grout is not necessarily waterproof. So if you're ever doing a uh, you know floor in a, in a wet room, like a shower or a bathroom, this stuff's great. This Schluter, Schluter stuff for uh, waterproofing your floor. It also acts as a decoupling membrane. Your tiles feel warmer if you're actually putting it on, like even if you're in your basement on a concrete floor, if you put this Dietra stuff down on top of the concrete, it actually keeps your tile warmer than it would be if you just put your tile directly on concrete. And in this situation, it'll provide warmth from the floor below. Okay, so what we're using to set this stuff down is a, uh, is it uh, 11 64ths square notch trowel. And we mix our thin set a little soupy in order for it to actually impregnate itself into the fibers on the bottom of the Schluter Dietra membrane. So there's like little furs under here. Okay, so once we've got the Dietra down, I use a grout float and I'm pushing the, the Dietra into the thin set like this. Now it's personal preference whether or not you want to lay your tiles lengthwise in the room or perpendicular to the lengthwise in the room. And in this case, for ease of installation, I am going to go perpendicular to the room. I don't necessarily like doing this. I like to go 
the long size of the tile, the length of the room. So my tiles are one by twos. I have a number of different colors tiles. So it's kind of like a patchwork tile. They're all kind of in the same similar family. They're all kind of like grayish beige. This was remnants from my uh, my favorite tile store, Bigelow Flooring. They were like, hey, Kevin, you want this tile? I'm like, yes, I do. But the only thing is, is they don't quite match together. So this is a perfect kind of opportunity to use it. And the tile that I cut off on this side, I'm gonna add on that side and I'm gonna carry on. I'm not going to follow any specific grout line. If you can do a random pattern, make sure you stay random. Don't do not random and then random because it'll look funny. So if you're gonna go random, commit to it. What I'm gonna do in this particular situation, because my back wall is not exactly square, and it tends to, at the end of your tiling job, if you didn't start off square, you're gonna have a bad time. So what I'm gonna do is measure off the back wall and start my level straight line at the back. Otherwise, when I get to my door, it's gonna be janky. We're at the point now where we've got to put the last tiles in. And the last tile happens to be at the doorway. Usually, or sometimes when people do this, they actually butt the tile up against the door jamb. I don't like doing that. I like to slide my tile underneath the door jamb. So in order to do that, what I do is I actually take a tile, I put it up against the door jamb, I add cardboard underneath to mimic my thin set, and that gives me the height I want to cut it at. Interesting story. When I was doing the firewood collection video, you guys can actually look back on that. Looking for firewood. It was in the, the back of a parking lot. Somebody had just junked it and I picked it up. This is a tile finishing edge. So when you have a rough cut of an edge, you actually slide your tile and it gives you your, your finished edge like that. Well guys, I think we really lucked out today because of the weather. I hear there's a polar vortex coming and you couldn't do this much colder than it is now. We've got our generator just humming. We've got our little space heater, which is keeping our space well above freezing. It's about 10 degrees. Well, while we sit around for that tile to dry, let's see if we can either A, make something or B, break something. I've got the old, that old boiler I picked up and I'm gonna chop it up and see if I can actually make it to look like a stove or the uh, the heater for the sauna. Just to get a little disclaimer here, I'm not a metal worker. I'm more of a woodworker than anything else. This is possibly the third or fourth thing I've ever built using steel. I did make a rocket stove at one point. That was many, many years ago. I haven't really touched stuff since, uh, but uh, we're gonna cut this thing up and uh, see where we're at. I. I I'm curious to see what's inside of it. I'm uh, curious to see if it's actually gonna work. So let's, uh, let's get started cutting this thing apart. So my plan with this guy is to make a small incision down the middle and then cut the sides all the way around to where it goes up. And then what I'm gonna do is actually take this and open it up and it gives me a nice big platform for rocks. Now that we've got the sides straightened up, you can kind of start seeing what I've kind of envisioned is that it gives a nice big tray here to actually add rocks and you can add it right around the firebox. Originally, this was inside a house as a boiler for actually heating hot water for radiator system or in-floor heating or whatever. So there's ports here that I don't need. So what I'm gonna do is cut these guys off. <laughs> Now 
What I'm using to weld this thing is my Lincoln Easy Mig 140. What does that mean? I don't know, it's a welder. It's red, it's got, you know, it says Lincoln Electric on the side. I think I picked it up from my local hardware store a while back, because I was like, I want to stick things together. So I bought a welder. Do I want anything more than that? No. Now that we've got the sides all welded up, the next step is to make a door. So my thoughts are on this guy, is if I take this thing, does everybody have a chunk of, you know, circle? A circle piece of steel kicking around? So I've acquired this many years ago, and I think it's the, uh, it's, it's the discarded chunk from a, like a plasma cutter, cutting chunks. And I'm like, these are cool wheel things. So I grabbed them all and I got a perfect opportunity to use it. So my plan is to actually take this guy and attach it there as a door. And I think the damper control is gonna be whether or not I just leave the door open a little bit or close the door. Now I've gotta fashion somewhat of a hinge in there somehow. Maybe I'll just tack it in. Friction fit. And then what I can do afterwards is put a giant rope gasket around the perimeter. My limited knowledge of welding basically comes down to clean where you're gonna weld. So grind off any kind of paint, any kind of debris, kind of like soldering. I'm more of a uh, glue stick approach. I'm gonna fill it with whatever this metal is. I've never really took a trade school or, or uh, you know, a welding class in my life. I just basically thought I wanna stick metal together. So what I did was I bought a welder and I started sticking metal together. Am I good at it? Yeah, I don't know, stuff doesn't fall apart. Is it pretty? Sorta. My, my motto is, you know, do your best and grind the rest. Walk across it, I think you can weld it. I don't know, there's a pretty big gap. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna actually clean up the, uh, the area where I'm gonna weld. When you open the door, the smoke tends to want to billow out into your face because the chimney is basically at eye level with the top of the opening of the door. So what I'm going to do is actually add a, <clears throat> a piece of steel that's going to go and basically create like a pocket where the smoke can pool at the top of the firebox and then out the chimney. If you didn't do this, every time you open the door, you'd have smoke coming out the front. If you look at your stove, if you do have a stove, when you open the door, there's a little piece of metal that sticks down and that's to encourage the smoke to go up the chimney as opposed to out in your face. I didn't quite anticipate it working as well as it does. I've got my little wooden handle, door swings like it's nothing. Got my little smoke deflector. Got my space for my rocks. I like the way it looks. I like how it's kind of like steampunkish. Steampunkish, ha <laughs> ha, steam. Anyway, but yeah, it's very, I like it. I like this, it's substantial. The whole thing, it weighs a ton or a couple hundred pounds. Got the uh, stove down, we're gonna do the uh, the inaugural burn. The inaugural burn on the boiler converted to wood stove sauna heater. It's minus 11. The winter has settled in, I believe. See if we can get this thing heated up. We're probably, we're like aiming at about 10 degrees inside so the grout doesn't freeze while it dries. Yeah, working in the, working in the winter's fun. Well guys, I'm pretty impressed with that. I think it's working as I planned it working. I've got a temporary pipe rigged up at the back just so it's got enough draft to actually pull it up and out. And uh, it seems to be working really well. And uh, you can see it just kind of vaporized it right away. Uh, once I've got the pop filled up with rocks, I think it'll work even better because uh, it'll give it more surface area. It'll, it'll have a, basically more opportunity to just kind of just vaporize. What do they call that? And, and, and finish with Loli, 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 uh, it's L-O-Y-L-Y. -L -Y? The little two dots on top of there. Steam. 
what that means. There's gonna be sort of a MacGyvered chimney pipe installation on this. It's gonna be like a pipe and a pipe and a pipe, and I think three layers of pipe will give me enough thermal break that and then an airspace so it won't catch the wall on fire and uh, there's gonna be some uh, heat deflectors at the back of it in order to uh, again try to keep this thing from burning down it's not gonna burn down and also the back wall I'm going to put a section of cement board there so non combustible material on the back wall to further prevent burning down also kind of gives me separation from the, uh, the wood it'll give me a little bit of a nice design thing as well because it's waterproof so when you if you do like you know overly ambitiously throw water at the thing and and uh have you know water splash at the back it's it'll be uh waterproof and then who knows maybe i'll tile it I, it's uh this is warming up now so i can i can hopefully grout today and get this thing in tomorrow again it's uh it's hot it's like uh sublimation when it goes from a solid ice to vapor without i guess it melts it really quick i didn't pay attention much in school can you tell it's foggy in here probably because the humidity is at like 86 percent it's uh i'm grouting i'm just cleaning the uh the floor you can you can kind of see it anyways it, there's a lot of humidity probably because I, I brought the camera in from outside and it was minus uh, you know 10 and now it's uh it's 12.5 degrees in here take your shoes off when you're in the house you even got non-slip coating feels like anyway well that's just more hey bean what do you think what do you think? What do you think, Bean? Is it awesome? It's awesome! He's like, when is it gonna be warm? When is it gonna be warm, Bean? It's big pipe day. We've got our big pipe. We're gonna put a chimney on Jupiter. That's our plan. We've got, uh, what is it, seven inch insulated pipe. It's the really, really heavy stuff. And we're gonna put a five inch pipe in that. And we're gonna put a six inch pipe over that and then we're gonna put it in the seven inch pipe and then it's gonna go up the roof. Went down to about minus 13 and then it shot up to one degree, which is ideal. Well, it's not ideal, but the floor looks awesome. Now we can walk on it. Okay, so now we're at this stage of the uh, stove installation. We're gonna create what I call a little bump out. It's going to be a non-combustible bump out. It's gonna be made of cement board and steel studs. So there's nothing burn, singe or char. And then uh, at a future date, we're going to tile the front of it to make it look pretty. So. It's almost like a, like a thermal break between anything combustible. As far as we got, we got the pipe, five inch pipe inside another two layer pipe inside an actual stove pipe, which is a, it's basically stainless steel on the outside, stainless steel on the inside, and it's filled with, I believe vermiculite or some sort of other kind of non-combustible material. And that is is really, it's proper, it's proper stove pipe, which I'm not, I don't use very often because I don't, I don't seem to have it very often, but. Good, the story behind this pipe is actually my good friend Lane up north. She uh, she bought a house and uh, she opted to get rid of her wood stove in the basement. And this was a pipe that went from her basement all the way to the second story and beyond the roof. And she was like, yeah, you can have it if you can take it down. And one July day, it had to be, I don't know, a million degrees outside. And, and her roof is really pitchy. And I was lugging that thing down by myself and, and questioning my position in life going what am I ever going to use this thing for and uh so yeah it's a sauna sauna chimney now thanks Lane why is this pipe so heavy So we're at the end of the day and I'm pretty excited to light this thing up and I want to see what kind of draw it's going to get. That's really what I want to see to make sure that there's enough draw. I think there's going to be tons of draw. You can kind of feel the draft now. You can feel it just actually getting sucked out in up the chimney. So we're just going to do a small fire just to make sure everything's good. And uh, yeah, we're well on our way to have our sauna. This is it's worked out better than I thought it was going to. It was kind of so, junk. It was somebody else's junk. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna have a long life, long life in the in the sauna. Like that thing is working perfect. I like the draft. I think you got to build the right size fire in this thing. It's not like a, you know, make sure when you get guests over, they know that you're only supposed to build the right size fire. Be back tomorrow. We're gonna put some interior cladding on and hopefully get this thing buttoned up on the inside. You know, another cool feature is the threshold 
is straight. So you can just sweep this thing right out the door. Anytime I have some free time, I come out here and nail up some wood. So we had uh, we had a little test fire over the weekend and uh, we've discovered a couple of uh, issues. Well, just one primary issue. The, the, the successes at first is that the stove works exceptionally well. We had we had it up well over 45 degrees Celsius. I know I know that's a far cry from 70 or 70 to 90 Celsius, which I guess the the saunas are supposed to be at. But like as a ginger, 50 Celsius that's pretty good. I don't know. I was in there for about you just go in there longer, right? So the ash that we put in here exactly it was milled. It was dead standing, and then we installed it. What we discovered is it's drying out. So it seems to be like the wider planks on this back wall. If you can. Take a close look at this stuff. It's a little wonky. I can stick my hand back behind here. You can see it's kind of moving. It's because it's drawing and cupping and, and the wider the board, the tendency to, to cup is, is greater because it's got a more of a surface area. So if you were to cut them down, you'd have less cupping. That's why we see on the ceiling, there is, you know, almost no cupping. And if there is cupping, it's actually working to our advantage because the ceiling is round. So what I'm going to do at the back wall here is actually remove some of these boards that are actually at the back wall and actually put more bracing on and uh, add some screws at uh, closer intervals to actually pull it pull the bend out of it and then i will tighten the screws over the day and flatten out that board we're going to just add some more steam in here because it is a it is a steam sauna so yeah so that's the plan for today is to basically flatten this back wall out i've got uh i've got a number of battens cut i don't know 33 battens because i've got to cover all the little cracks and uh, we got window build outs to do, trim to do. It's bright out there. It's cold in here. It's like the coolest sauna I've ever been in. It's sunny, the storm has passed. We're gonna work on the sauna. I had some problems the other, t the other day when I uh, started the batteries actually ended up dying on me so I couldn't finish up my battens. Uh, I took the opportunity to go mill some wood and uh, I've got all my wood sawed out for my benches and I've got the rest of the battens. So hopefully getting some use out of it. You know, like it's been a long haul, but we gotta get it done. So let's uh, let's light the fire and make sure we a uh, nice little workspace, nice warm workspace to work in. Even though I'm in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. We can still keep it kind of warm. So let's, uh, let's get that fire up and uh, let's get started. I'm pretty impressed on how this stove is actually working. It, it, it's, it's amazing how easy it is to light and the draft that's there probably it's the giant chimney. Once you get the little kindling going, it just kind of, it, it sucks it right out. They got no smoke coming out the front. It's really easy to light. If you guys didn't, uh, if you guys didn't see the previous video to this one, you can actually check out how I built this guy out of a repurposed uh, Weizmann boiler. That's from Germany. So one of the issues we had the other video was that uh, this back wall was going all warped. And uh, as you can see, I ended up putting screws in where the nails were and, uh, and I flattened it all out. So basically I let it heat up again and uh, I just kind of tucked the boards on the edge of them, on the edge of the boards. And I think it's, uh, it's ready for battens now. So it's some pretty high humidity in here the other day. And I think it was because all the wood was drying out all at once. And, and it's actually, I think it's better for it. I don't, I don't, encourage you to build your entire house with wet wood but if that's the only option as long as you know what's going to do or have an idea what it's going to do you can kind of build with it and just let it do its thing and then if it doesn't do what you want correct it so basically what they want you to do is to put a ventilation just above the stove and that basically what it's going to do is, is as the hot air rises from the stove it picks up fresh air from outside and it mixes it in so you don't like you know fall asleep and never wake up so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to drill a hole here and then there's going to be a hole actually in the door with a louver that allows me to control the amount of air that's going to come in and out of the sauna. To drill that hole, I've got a hole saw with my little Makita drill. It's a little underpowered, but use what you have. I'm doing this now because that's, the stove isn't quite hot yet. This shouldn't take as long as it's taking. Apparently my teeth are very sharp. <coughs> Smoker. Too bad we don't have any ventilation holes yet. It was just that easy. Hot.
my original plan was to put the battens on the back wall, but then I was thinking, if I do that, then what am I going to attach or how am I going to attach the bench to? I'd have to cut the battens off. So to think beyond your nose every once in a while to see how far in the project, you don't want to do something which you got to take apart afterwards. So I'm going to put the bench in first. And what I'm going to use for that is I've milled up some basically one and three quarter by one and three quarter inch cedar. This is the, I guess the second piece of cedar I've used in this project. First was the door, the door is made out of cedar. So in the Finnish handbook, it basically says uh, alder in, in my neck of the woods. That's also called poplar. Um, I had a poplar tree that come down. Uh, if you guys remember over at the cube, we took it down, but then when I milled it up, it had a weird smell to it. So I think it was like, almost like it was rotting. So it was dead standing, but it was, it was, it was starting to go funky and I didn't want funky wood in my sauna. What I like to do when I'm building something, I quite don't quite know what I'm doing is that I'll, I'll tack it in place just to kind of give me an idea of what it looks like. In this case, the bench is a hundred inches long and I don't know exactly how wide it is going to be yet because I don't know how much wood I build up. And, and it's really frustrating when you kind of get it half built and you're like, oh, I gotta get another tree. I'm gonna build what I want with what I have. I like it already, it's, it's already holding my level. How's that for a bench? Now that I got the bench kind of in its final form, I'm going to stiffen it up a little bit. As you can see, the ends of these guys, they more or less move. So what I'm gonna do is actually stick a piece underneath to support the end. That's what I'm talking about. Oh, that's nice. Ah. You can comfortably, like, you can have a nap in here. Let's just have a nap. Oh, oh it's so comfy. Oh, it's gonna be hard to get any work done. Be relaxing in my sauna. Chop some wood. That's my favorite activity in the winter is actually busting up wood. It warms you a couple times. It warms you while you're cutting it. It warms you while you're burning it. It warms you while you're stacking it. I like firewood. And it's good to, you know, once you're done at the end of the day or, you know, you're taking a break, relax. Slower pace in the winter time. You can kind of, you know, load a log on the fire and just watch it burn. That's what I enjoy. That's, that's, that's what winter is about for me. Well, winter activities too. Skating. It's sledgehammer time, boys. Let's go find some rock. So I've got my little sled here. And I'm gonna go up. I'm gonna go up behind the uh, behind the shop in the pines. Like I said, there was a pile of rock there. So we're gonna try to find that and collect it. We'll see if it works. Who knows how hard this is gonna be to break up. The goal is to get a rock that's not uh, got water trapped inside of it. And, and what I was told was to go to a fresh blast site and pick up the rocks that are baseball sized chunks, softball, hardball, chunks to, to, I guess, fill the top of the boiler. I guess you could buy them. I'm, I'm not in the mood to buy. So I've got a plan. Um, so there's, there was an old, I believe there was an old barn on this property at one point and there's these pillars and they look like giant hunks of solid rock that were there at some point. And my plan is to basically go bust those things up. And um, I can't think of a better thing to do while it's minus 100. It's not minus 100, it's cold. So I'm gonna go bust up some rocks and hopefully accumulate enough rocks, probably about 100 kilograms or something like that of rock that goes on top of that thing. Give me a little bit more thermal mass in here uh, to, in order to keep it warmer longer. Cause currently there's, there's not much thermal mass. There's the floor, there's the walls, there's the, you know, the benches and stuff like that, but there's not enough, there's not enough stuff in here. So it's gotta be, gotta be heavier. So that's why the purpose of the rocks. Also it helps when you throw water on it, it helps kind of diffuse the water. It kind of allows it to evaporate quicker. Let's go find a rock in the snow and break it up. Ow, right in the leg, son of a. That's not a baseball sized chunk. <sighs> okay, I think I might have learned something. I think you gotta 
you treat it like splitting wood. You kind of have to find a weakness in the rock and hit it. I don't know if that's igneous rock. It sort of looks like igneous rock based on the pictures I was looking at. I guess we're going to find out. It kind of is granite an igneous rock. I should look that up because it looks a heck of a lot like granite. I don't know if it smells like granite, but we're getting there. All right, who's gonna carry those back to the sauna? That's the hardest thing I've done in a while. Breaking rocks isn't fun. That's uh, my tip of the day. Where's Don? It is his sledgehammer, so he's in, he's here in spirit. Let's see if I can ride these rocks back back to the sauna. That should that should be a good start. I don't know if it's that's not enough. Then I don't know. Maybe we'll uh, yeah, we'll have to get some more, right? I did some research and I actually consulted a buddy of mine, Jay at Vision Quest Outdoors. He has a YouTube channel all about rocks. He takes rocks and he hits them and they break off and they make shapes arrowheads things that are rocked i just break them and make them into baseball size pieces i consulted with him and we are convinced well i'm convinced he's more or less convinced it appears to be a granite with light colored intrusive igneous rock that contains mainly quartz feldspar mica material that's what i think it is kind of can you see that that's kind of what it looks like if it wasn't, you know, this one's not wet and this one is wet. So this one, uh, uh, I'm told what it's going to do is uh, not explode if it is heated up and cooled rapidly. What it will do is chances are it'll just crack and then turn to sand. Um, my word of advice when you use the saunas to wear your safety glasses while you're using it. Uh, in case rocks shoot off, but he was also mentioning that if there is no quartz or very little quartz in the material, it won't explode. And, and as I can tell, as I can tell, there is no quartz in there, which is like, you know, the white colored, almost translucent rock. Uh, it seems to be solid. We're gonna hope for the best. We're gonna, we're gonna heat up our rock, give her a test, throw some water on that thing and see if it, uh, see if it explodes. I'm pretty confident it's not going to. It might like crack all scary like, but sauna and some fear. Gets you sweating. That's the purpose, right? So I picked this up a while back because I was thinking, it's a good deal. It was at uh, it was at IKEA for I don't know, ten dollars roughly. It's a strip light. So the 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 plan with this guy is to install it underneath the bench. And what it's going to do is going to light up the floor, give you a nice little glow uh, at nighttime. And and you know, especially when you're in a sauna and you don't really want to see everything, if you know what I mean. It'll be perfect amount of light. Although during the daytime, it's it's bright in here because we got the, the whole basically wall of windows. Is it LED bird or is that Leadberg? I don't know. Look them up in IKEA. Everything's made in China, anyways. What are you gonna do? You know what? It is what it is. Why do they give you such small screws with these things? Like like, I got this screwdriver and it doesn't even like. It's so like tiny. They don't even fit. Well, it does kind of fit, but it's gonna. You know it's gonna like twist out. Why, why even bother giving you screws? Just like just put it up with a hope and a prayer, I guess. That's my pet peeve. My pet peeve on these little tiny light things they give you. Is little tiny screws, and then you're supposed to put them up above your head, and, and it just doesn't. It doesn't always work. But they give you tape. I guess that's to stick it on, so you can watch it in frustration as you put your screw on. Look at that. That's my ambiance light. My ambiance. Stop for a sec. Hee hee ha ha. France. Vroom, 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 vroom. It's my lightsaber. Well, that's gonna have, that's gonna have just enough light. Wires back there. And they're all set. A lot of the times it's easier to split firewood in the winter because it's frozen. It just kind of pops. drying out, everything's shrinking. Just add nails where they keep popping out. I debated on what kind of latch system I want to put on this door. 
and time coming in and out and, and letting it kind of cool down overnight, what I was finding is there's a lot of condensation and, and, and moisture forming on the door, causing it to kind of get stuck. So I don't really want to put a latch system in place just in case water gets down there and just freezes it solid. You can't get in, you can't get out. Well, hopefully you can get out, but if you can't get in, that would, yeah, you just go through the window or something like that. But so what I've opted to do is I've just got, uh, basically it's a, it's a magnetic keeper that I'm going to attach onto the top portion and then just a little, little metal plate. And that should uh, allow me to get in and out, keep the door closed from blowing in the wind. It's not like, we're not talking high security. What is it? Is the bear gonna get in here? The coziest bear ever. I guess they don't have to light a fire. The bear would get in here, it'd be cold, they'd just probably leave. Little tiny screw. If you guys have been following the build, you guys know I like to use branches as doorknobs, door handles. So my plan with this guy, as much as the same as the other builds, is to, because uh, it looks like a handle, right? So I'm just gonna cut it, cut it there. And on the inside, it's gonna be a little bouton, little knob. You can pull it shut, magnetic latch will catch it. Should work. Oh, that's so nice. It's the best doorknob. It's cold, it's uh, yeah, minus 20 with the wind chill, Canadian, it's cold. But let's see how warm it is inside. We've been having, uh, we lit this thing up in the morning. You know, I think that's what you're supposed to do with saunas. You're supposed to foresee the future and think, you know what, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna sit in my sauna tonight. So you light it up in the morning and uh, let's see what it is at. Well, we're gonna fog up 78.6 Fahrenheit right now. And we're fogging up. We gotta let the camera warm up a bit. I'm gonna do a little cleanup in here and then get my uh, get my skillet. We're gonna see if we can cook on this thing. Oh, the fog! Fog it away! It's been a while since I've made an egg sandwich and I'm just gonna see if this stove is up to the task. We've got uh, got our rocks well piled. They're, they're relatively hot. I don't know if they're not. They're not crazy hot. Like I can't, I can't hold on to them with a glove on. It's uh, I'm gonna read 74 point, 75, 75 Fahrenheit in here, which isn't. It's not sauna weather yet. We're getting, we're getting there. This is a long process. So what I'm gonna try to do is gonna make a little area here that I can actually put my my little frying pan on because I'm gonna cook. I'm gonna cook lunch. This is our current temp. Can you see that? 75.9. We're at near 76 degrees Fahrenheit. We're gonna see how hot this thing can get. Uh, after my egg sandwich, it's full pile of wood. We're gonna ramp it up. We're gonna just keep adding wood. We got the door closed for good now, so we're not gonna let any of the heat out. We got our we got our flat spot. All right, making an egg sandwich. Got my butter. My butter's frozen. Oh, it's not frozen for long. Got our egg. It's hot. It's really hot. <laughs> Typical sauna, I don't know, like a 10% moisture, like it's dry, I should probably throw some water on there, I'm not gonna do that yet. Um, this is again, just a test. We're testing it, we don't know what we're doing. Do we? This is why we're testing it. Let's see if we can get her hotter. I can't see anything, it's all fogged up. I got my still safety glass, my steel. It's German, great German company with my German boiler, my Weissman and my steel. I can't see a thing. Safety, safety eventually, that's what I say. My egg is cooking, I can't see anything. We're not getting enough, we're not getting a lot of heat off this, this, this good Teflon pan, right? So we're not, we're not cooking real, real well. Should probably use cast iron on this thing or maybe in the future weld some sort of a plate on it so we get more contact. If I'm gonna keep, I'm just gonna leave that on there. I can't even flip it yet. Still got a little bit of time left to cook that bad boy. No, I can't even, I can't even touch the rocks. That's how hot they are. And yet I can't cook an egg, which goes to show you that Teflon is not the greatest. Fresh bread egg sandwich. I've got a little bit of a, a little bit of a crunch there, a little bit of softness. Oh yeah, I've been waiting for this all day. Oh, it's hot again. <laughs> you know, it's nice to have a little spot where you can go in the middle of, in the middle of winter when it's, you know, minus 20 outside and, and you're like, you know what? Summer's never coming. You can make your own summer in here. You, you come in here, you load your logs in and you, you fire it up to whatever temp you want. You don't have to worry about paying the electricity to heat it up. You don't have to worry about any of the costs associated with it. You just kind of, you just kind of, you know, fire it up. You're alone in the wilderness. The other good thing about this place is that I made the benches on both sides large enough to actually sleep on. So if there was 
if I have guests and they, you know, they don't want to stay in the cabin or, you know, they got a snoring buddy that they want to get away from, this would double as a, as a sleeping quarter. So you got two beds, one on each side. It's a perfect place to actually lay down, relax, even in the summertime, you know, like, like a day bed, a place to relax. It's, it's a great little spot. If it's raining, it's a good place to get, you know, get in here and, and kind of reprieve from the rain. You don't have to be out in the weather or, you know, if you're using the, uh, you're using the rink or the pond, you can come in here warm up. You don't have to, you don't always have to go for 140 degrees. You can go, you know, room temperature and have a nice spot to either put your skates on, uh, come back and warm up while you're, you know, if you're freezing. It's, it's all around good space. You know what? You could, it, it doubles as a kiln too. You could, you know, if you got a woodworking project and you need your wood dry quick, you just throw it in here and fire up the sauna and close the door. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see anything anymore. Holy! Oh, <coughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Try again. <laughs> ah. I went from like 10% humidity to like 100%. <laughs> I did not expect that. The walls, the benches, everything, everything kind of was milled with wood that was dead. It was hanging around for a little while. So it's not like 100% moisture. It was probably like, you know, 20 or 30% moisture. Ideally, when you build with wood, your moisture content's like a 10 or less. So a lot of this stuff is still losing its moisture. So as it loses its moisture, it'll actually heat up quicker because it, it acts more like an insulator. It's not as dense. So that's, uh, we're gonna keep playing around with it to see how hot we can get it in here and see how well, it's still a little tweaking, a little bit of a learning curve with the stove, especially, you know, that being said, the, the, the chimney pipe is rather large. I might look into dampening that down a little bit so we don't are sucking actually as much air into the building, having to heat it up. But yeah, overall, I'm pleased with this project the way it's turned out and uh, I hope you guys join me on the next one.